Today, we're going to add a CSS framework to our Chrome extension. So why do we need the CSS framework? Well, it raises the level of abstraction of our CSS. So if we look at raw CSS, right, we've got very specific code in here. By adding a CSS framework, it raises the level of abstraction and lets us group certain elements and refactor our CSS to make it uh, more maintainable. Also, it's easier to make uh, our look of our pop-up and options pages more professional. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to refactor our extension. And I'm starting um, as the base with uh, level five of our series where we added the options page. So we're gonna refactor um, our extension so that these CSS files in our static folder are actually bundled into our JavaScript file using the Webpack bundler. So that is the kind of um, the best practice right now is to bundle CSS with JavaScript. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's add the bundling. So we need to in install two loaders, a style loader and a CSS loader. So we're gonna install a style loader and a CSS loader. Uh, <clears throat> so the style loader adds the support um, to import the CSS into our, into our JavaScript. And the CSS loader basically simply reads in the CSS as a string. So those two work together um, to accomplish this. So let's, uh, so we, uh, we added the loader. So now let's update our webpack. Um, webpack common config file to add the actual loader. See, we have our TypeScript loader here. Let's add our CSS loader. So we're gonna use the style loader and the CSS loader, which we just installed. So now we're gonna go ahead and move these two CSS files. They're no longer gonna be static files. They're gonna be part of our source directory. We're gonna move both of them there. And in our uh, TypeScript files, we're going to import those CSS files. Uh, Options.css like this, right? So the style loader makes this syntax possible. And in the pop-up file, we're going to import the pop-up CSS here. Import pop-up.css. Okay. Um, another thing is in the HTML file, we have the links to these files, so we can just remove those. They'll be loaded in the JavaScript file. So let's remove those links and let's see uh, what happens. Let's uh, run npm. Let's run npm start. Okay, we've built. So let's take a look at the files that were generated. So let's look at popup.javascript. So you see the CSS that was in the CSS files is now here loaded uh, in the JavaScript file. And let's double check our extension to make sure things are still working. Uh, let's go ahead and load unpacked. Let's go to our extension and load it. Let's uh, pin it. My Chrome extension, let's pin it. Like the style is still uh, still the same. So now we're gonna go to the next part where we're actually gonna install a CSS framework. So the framework we're gonna use is Tailwind CSS. Um, it's a very popular uh, CSS framework and it provides utility classes like this, Flex, PT4, Text Center. And the documentation 
for those utility utility classes is all all over here so for example we go to the width documentation and we have all these utility classes right um, and tailwind css comes with themes um, so the combination of these utility classes and a the theme makes it easier to adjust the look of your entire um, entire application so let's go ahead and add tailwind, C tailwind css um, so the way Tailwind CSS is integrated with the Webpack bundler is using another loader, uh, the Post CSS loader. So we've added, we've added the style loader and the CSS loader. So now we have to add another loader, a Post CSS loader, which will then bring in Tailwind. So we're going to go ahead and install. <clears throat> going to kill this. We're going to install Tailwind CSS and our post CSS loader. Okay, it's installed. Then we're going to initialize Tailwind CSS, which will create a uh, config file. And we're going to use dash dash TS because we're using TypeScript. So we want our, um, our file to be TypeScript. Let's jump back into the file that was created. Here we go, Tailwind config TS and in here we're gonna point to our HTML files right so in our HTML files we're gonna be able to use these Tailwind CSS utility classes and the configuration needs to know Tailwind configuration needs to know about which utility classes we're using in order to include them in our bundle right uh, so one of the beauties of Tailwind CSS is when you bundle everything, you don't get all the classes. You only get the classes that you're using. And, all right. So we're going to point it to our HTML files here. So we're going to say static HTML like this. And for theme, we're not going to modify it. We're just going to use the standard uh, Tailwind, Tailwind CSS theme. So let's back jump back into here and we're going to add the post CSS loader here. <clears throat> so we're still going to use the style in the CSS loader and now we're going to add the post CSS loader and Tailwind CSS is going to be a plugin to this loader. We are going to also add this post CSS import um, because we're going to be using an import statement to do uh, some additional refactoring of our CSS. So at this point, uh, we're ready to go to start making changes uh, to our HTML. So let's go ahead and make some changes. So we're going to refactor our CSS a little bit. We're going to go here and add a common.css. Um, we have two pages, right? We have the options and the pop-up page, and there's some CSS that we want to share between the two. So we're going to call it common.css. Uh, it, it's also going to have these uh, tailwind um, tailwind directives uh, that Tailwind is aware of. This apply is another directive. So here is is basically a, a way to structure your CSS. So we are using these utility classes, margin, uh, padding, colors, um, you know, how, how this input should look, rounded, you know, the color when it's focused. And we're going to combine all of these using this apply directive into a single, a single CSS class, which we will use in our HTML. So we created the common.css. Um, so now we're going to create a, uh, we're going to modify the pop-up.css. Uh, so we have the CSS for the switch and then we have CSS for the button link. Um, and, and, um, the CSS for the input. Let's, let's see, we have CSS for the switch. We're going to put that in the HTML file, the CSS for this input box. Uh, we, you just saw in the common we have my input and the CSS for this um, button link uh, we're going to add. So let's see. So um, 
basically we don't need any of this we're going to get rid of all of it and we're going to replace it so first we're going to import and this import directive that's why we needed that post css import plugin for this one so we're going to import the common css we're going to add a css for centering so this will be used to center items on in our pop-up and then for that bottom button link, we're going to use, uh, we're going to add a CSS class. Uh, it's going to be a certain color, padding. Um, okay, so see, um, you know, the amount of CSS we need has been reduced quite a bit. So it is a bit more maintainable. Also, we're able to refactor and use multiple classes, and then we're able to combine multiple classes into a single class. And then the option CSS, it's, we don't actually need anything special here because all we're gonna adjust um, is that input input field. So we do, well, the only thing we're gonna do is do this import. All right, so let's go jump into our HTML files. All right, so we have so we have our switch here. So we're going to replace this um, with CSS written in um, using the utility classes of Tailwind. So basically, all that switch box is going to be accomplished by all these utility classes. Okay, well, let's get rid of this. And then we have our input item. So let's change that. Uh, we do have a warning here that's complaining about a label. So let's just add a label and make it invisible. So we're going to add a label, make it invisible. And then we're going to use my input, right, which is in, in our comma.css. But we're going to um, we're going to add a width to it as well. Okay. And then we have our button link on the bottom. So let's, uh, let's replace that. So the change here is where we're using that my center class to, to center things. And then we're applying, um, the, the class, uh, this class right here. Okay, so the pop-up page is done. Pop-up page is done. Let's go to the options page. So what are we doing in the options page? So we wanna, we wanna improve these things over here. So this is what we're gonna do. These are the changes we're gonna make here. So. We're going to add a margin to the whole thing, make it nicer. Um, advanced options, we're gonna you know style it using this these classes, add a margin, make it extra bold. H3 class, we're gonna just make it bold. And then we're gonna use the input, my input with a different width. Uh, and add a placeholder here. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and try it out. Let's see. Let's see if, uh, if this works now. NPM start. Okay. No error so far. Good sign. We're going to go to extensions and we're going to simply reload this. And let's take a look. You see the input is nicer here. The slider here slides back and forth. It also has a uh, focus here so we can tab, switch between elements. Uh, this advanced options is in the center. It looks a little bit nicer. And if we click on it, we're taken to our advanced options page. And then we have the our bolded font over here. And then we have this input here also looks a little bit nicer than the raw HTML input. Um, all right, so this is a way to add a CSS framework to a uh, Chrome extension. Uh, so in the next series, 
In the next video, we're going to talk about unit tests and how they can help us catch bugs earlier and make our Chrome extension more maintainable.